Now Prober, oh, Prober's Prober's got the right, the right hand free. He's loose with the right hand, and he starts to retaliate, and down goes Nyland, and the two of them are hammering each other. Knights of Columbus, that hurt. It's old time, my kid. Enforcer of all hockey podcasts. It's the biscuit. It's the biscuit. The enforcer of all hockey podcasts. God help the fucking day if fighting's ever been. There's a country will stop working on the Batman's fucking candle. Hi everybody. It's the biscuit podcast. Hey, you wanna go? Yeah, okay. Good luck, man. All right, I'm here with Ken Bulky of the Simbin Podcast. How we doing, Ken? Pretty good. How's it going, dude? It's fucking great here, man. Um, I gotta tell you, I'm I'm excited to talk uh, Las Vegas hockey with you, bud. Let's do it. It there's something about this team that usually an expand besides when Columbus got a team because I live in Ohio, I was obviously excited, but like. Usually it'll be, you know, oh, cool, Atlanta's getting a team. Who gives a shit, you know? Uh, <clears throat> but there's some – or Nashville's getting a team. Cool, whatever. There's something that has me excited about this. Is What, what do you think it is? Can you put – is it because it's in Las Vegas or, or – there's something about it. I can't quite – I can't quite put my finger on it. I think that's part of it. I, th- I think that being Vegas, being a place that pretty much everybody's been or at least has some sort of connection to, hell, if you've played – roulette one time in your life you at least have some connection to vegas in some form or fashion so i've always said that it's even though there's only 2.1 million people that live here and there's probably i don't know you probably throw another million that have lived and moved so we're talking probably three million people total ever that have lived here in the history of the city i think it's still the favorite city of over about probably a hundred million people in the world which is absolutely incredible when you consider that barely that many people have lived here so i think everybody's got that connection and then for me i know the jerseys are sick i'm a huge fan of the logo i love the jerseys the name's kind of stupid but i can get past that the, the name I, I the, the name was dumb but i there wasn't a whole lot they could go from uh at, here at the biscuit we just call them the gambits just because it, it's a little inside joke we have but when the logo came out, I was like, well, that's that's not bad. But when the jerseys came out, I was like, oh, shit, those are kind of fucking sweet. Yeah, they're, the, the jerseys are sick. Wait till you see the white ones. Or it, Have you gotten a chance to see them in person? No, my eyes haven't actually seen them, no. Yeah, so wait until that because there's some intricacies in like the actual physical logo on the chest. And then there's some really like goofy stuff going on in the gold uh, trim on the arms. I did. They're see, really really cool. I did see online. It almost looks like a paisley pattern, you know, yeah. mixed up, and it's really unique. Uh, and you don't see that on any of the other jerseys um, that Adidas has done. That that intricate. Um, so I think that the the one thing I did is the the red line seemed weird, but it, it's going to keep them separated from Pittsburgh because of the black and gold a little bit. And are they going to rock the white gloves? Home, home is black gloves and black helmets. Road is white gloves and white helmets. So yes, they are definitely wearing the white gloves, and it's the best thing I've seen. I love them. That that's a fucking a miracle. I I am I am so on board for fucking white gloves. That makes me so happy. Yeah did you did you have a chance to see uh, when I asked Nate Schmidt about them? No, I didn't. Oh, it's fantastic. It's it's pinned on my Twitter. I'll leave it up there for after you post this podcast. So just go on at Sinbin Vegas. There's your shameless plug five seconds <laughs> into the podcast. But yeah, just go on there. It's so awesome. I basically said to him, I was like, what do you think of the white gloves? And his response was, they are absolutely awesome. I wanted to get my contract done so I could get a pair of these gloves. <laughs> That's awesome. He's dude. the best. He is. He's absolutely hilarious. Like if you don't, if, if you're not a fan of any team yet, be a fan of the golden Knights for one guy. And that's Nate Schmidt. He's the best, you know, I, and I'm seeing that on hockey Twitter. There's a lot of people, um, for whatever, not even for whatever reason there. I mean, you can go to Vegas and lose your ass. And there's something about that city that where you're going, well, fuck, I'm going back there. This place is awesome. You it's know, the best. May, it's the the atmosphere. Maybe it's that taste of fuck. I could I could win a shit ton of money. 
Yeah, that's that's the key. Yeah, you you can you can put in nine dollars and you can walk away with uh, nine million. Probably not going to happen, but right. And you can literally walk around in like CVS with a beer, like, and it doesn't fucking matter. No. And you don't really. I mean, I'm sure you live out there. You've seen, but when I was there, I didn't see too many people getting off the fucking handle. I mean, there were some dudes drinking and shit, but it seems like in yeah. at, in an atmosphere where you're allowed to do it, people kind of happens. Yeah, you, I, mean, nah, I mean, it's not too bad. Like you, you, you gotta, you know, you gotta be careful. You, you get the people that get a little uh, pissy when they they lose a whole shit ton of money gambling. But you know, and then if you've ever been in a sports book when there's a big event, that's always a blast. Like if you ever come out for the Super Bowl or March Madness, you will hear the loudest fucks you've ever heard in your <laughs> life. It's, it's it's the best. I've never had more fun than watching Dude, March Madness Thursday and Friday. That's fucking, that's crazy. The one time I've been to Vegas was during the uh, first week of March Madness and it's it was it was so intense and so yeah. much fun. Like even if you didn't bet on a game, watching the other dudes that bet on games was so much fun. And it's hilarious down the stretch watching the, the free throws and that kind of stuff. And what's going to be great is – there's this myth that everybody who lives in Vegas doesn't bet or doesn't gamble. That's the biggest horse shit I've ever heard in my life. Like literally I moved here to gamble and like <laughs> everybody I know did the same. Like literally we all bet on sports. Like every single person I know that's a sports fan bets on sports. So when you look at going to hockey games, like there are going to be games where they're, you know, the puck line is, is plus plus one twenty for golden Knights and they'll be down by two and the place will go nuts that right. they score a goal to be down by only one, you know, down the late in the game. Or or totals, like if the game is five and a half and there's an empty net goal for the other team, the place is going to erupt for yeah. the over. They, and that's going to make Las Vegas even more unique than the team already is. That Because that, that atmosphere is it's going to be something different than any other any other barn in the NHL. That They're going to have that, that different feel to that stadium. And you're going to get a lot of people that just want to go to a hockey game, I think. I mean, you're going to have your regulars, but you're going to have, like you said, you know, another million and a half so people, tourists, oh, yeah. you know, coming in. They're going, oh, you know, the casino gives you fucking free tickets to the game. You're going. Yeah, I mean, you're going to notice, like, if you go to Vegas, like, you'll see shows like Cirque du Soleil, fucking um, – Donnie and Marie still have a show at the Flamingo. Like if they can sell 500, 600 tickets a night, like there's no way that the best hockey players on the earth can't sell 15,000 seats. So it, it's going to be interesting. It'll be, it'll be a little weird to see how many people are cheering for the home team, how many people are cheering for the road team. I think that's going to be a bit of a challenge, at least off the top. And I yeah. think that you're going to notice that really quickly because I think that's the second or third game they play Boston. And then they play Detroit right after that. Oh, and those... that place is just going to be jammed with the opposite fans. Oh yeah. A bunch, bunch of degenerates. I think, yeah. I do think though, when, when all is said and done, The fact of the matter is there's butts in the seats. Like when you look at attendance, I can almost guarantee you they will surpass 100% every single game this season. And that's not because there's 80,000 Golden Knight fans going to games. Like that's not what's happening. It's just the fact is everybody's purchased the tickets, understanding that they have a shit ton of value moving forward. You're going to see a lot of people making money off these tickets and you're going to see butts in the seats. So right. uh, it, it financially, it's a no brainer no, to absolutely. come to Vegas. So, and a lot of people man. didn't believe that. And uh, I heard uh, Martin St. Louis the other day on uh spitting chicklets say, you know, when you're down there on the ice, really all you're hearing is noise anyhow. So maybe, you know, the Vegas dudes will be so used to, you know, the environment being kind of, you know, um, maybe more so leaning to the visitors that it's just going to be, you know, they're going to get used to it because they're going to be playing in Vegas, you know? So it, it might give them an advantage um, in, in a way if they can get used to that kind of atmosphere. I'm still trying to figure out like which hotel they're all staying at so that I can show up and like, Hey, Brent Burns, why don't you come play craps with us? Yeah. Why dude. don't you come over to like, I'm, I'm trying to keep these guys out all night. Cause I'll survive. I'll wake <laughs> up. I'll survive. No yeah, problem. Know, they got to go play a hockey game. No fucking problem. Now you've actually been into the practices and seen, uh, well, camp started, uh, today, didn't yes- it? Yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday. So what do you, what are you taking away so far? Who's looking good on your, on your radar and, uh, anybody, over exceeding your expectations or everybody right about where you think 
Yeah, it's it's really hard to tell because like you got a group of guys who have a pretty good idea that they're on the team, and actually, I found out today that that number is significantly larger than I thought. Like when I go through the roster, and that you could probably do the same, you'll see a lot of players kind of in that one and a half to two million dollar range, sometimes even a little bit lower than that, where the you know twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven. And it feels like there's a lot of guys on the bubble. Well, I asked Coach Gallant today, I said, how many guys, like normally you go to a camp and you know there's 20 guys that are on the roster and there's a few spots in the back end. How many guys have a spot cemented? And his answer was something along the lines of 15, 16, 17, possibly as high as 18. Oh, no he said shit. there's only three or four spots available, which no really shit. shocked me because you can go down that defensive core and like, Tell me which one of these guys is a guarantee. Like, I'll, I'll name them for you. Which which one of these is a guarantee to be on an NHL roster? Jason Garrison, Lucas Spisa, Clayton Stoner, Nate Schmidt, Braden McNabb, John Merrill, Colin Miller, Derek Englin, Griffin Reinhardt, Shea Theodore, Brad Hunt. Right. And I, I'm like, on, I, none of them. You see Daily Faceoff, and they have the six pairings now, McNabb, Theodore, Schmidt, Miller, uh, Sabiza, and Garrison. And I'm going, I, I don't know, man. I'm convinced Theodore is not going to make the team out of camp, and that has nothing to do with his talent. That has all to do with the fact that he's waiver exempt. So they have the ability to send him down to the AHL without any repercussion compared to if you decide, eh, we're not enthralled with what we're seeing out of John Merrill in camp. We're not enthralled with what we're seeing out of Griffin Reinhardt in camp. Maybe we'll send them down, and then you wind up losing the guy out of waivers for absolutely nothing right even though i think a lot of these are going to come down to business decisions not necessarily hockey decisions which is kind of gonna piss off all the fans but they'll get over it yeah they they certainly will um there's one guy i hope to see in the roster more often than not uh obviously i enjoy a a good tilt every now and again so i hope uh england breaks in every now and again uh just because i enjoy the way he plays and that i see he's you know marked as scratch now but a lot's going to change you know or maybe not um, I think he's going to play. I think he's going to play quite a bit. I, I didn't think that originally when I first saw the roster, but now that I've kind of gotten to watch them play and gotten to know the team, he's the de facto captain. They're not going to name a captain, but yeah. for all intents and purposes, he's the captain. I like he's that. from Vegas, or at least has been for the past like 15 years. So he has that tie. He's kind of been running practice and doing all this stuff. He was the reason that we got to go into all these informal practices before camp started. He invited the media and everything. So he's been really good. And I think that you're going to just based on the simple fact that like, who do we wait or who do we scratch today? Lucas Spisa or, J- or Derek England doesn't yeah. really matter. I mean, the team is <laughs> not good. like who gives a damn. So when yeah. all said and done, they're probably going to put England out there quite a bit. Plus, I think you're right. I think I think you're going to want to see some fights. I think they're going to get into some scraps with some teams just to Dude, prove what, that you can't be pushed around. What Vegas loves a fucking fight. You know what oh, I mean? No doubt about it. We got one tonight. Exactly. Vegas is fucking made for a dude like England to be in there. And uh, I don't know if you had a chance to read his piece he just did with Violent Gentlemen, but I mean, he got me excited. Really, really excited for Las Vegas hockey, man. Yeah, he's great. He and they actually used one of my questions in that one. No uh, shit. Yeah, because I was I, I I still wonder, and I still can't get an answer from him. I've asked him like four times. So he lived here. He bought a house. He's actually bought two houses since he's lived here, and he's lived here for like fifteen years. He used the same realtor. Well, he sent that realtor like every single player on this team. So all of a sudden, you have as a realtor. You're sitting here with 40 guys making over a million dollars coming in, buying houses from you. Like that guy's going to rake just simply off of Derek England. Like, does he get commissioned? Does he get a new house? Like, <laughs> how does this work? Dude, you know? he's, get, like, he's getting something, man. He's got to, right? I am. <laughs> like, I want to be that realtor. I don't even know. I don't, I don't have a real estate license. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. But I would have learned if you, if Derek England would have guaranteed me that I would have gotten all his, his clients. No shit. I mean, I wonder if that realtor fucking like – Went to high school with him or something. He's like, "Ah, dude, let's hook it up," you know. Or used to get him blow back in the day or something. I, I, I do know that uh, Mark Andre Fleury moved into the same neighborhood as Floyd Mayweather, and I know the houses in there run at least ten million. Good God! So, you, like, I mean, I don't know if you've ever bought a house, but like, you get like three percent or so yeah. as commission. Like, uh holy shit! Yeah, thanks. <laughs> holy shit! Uh, so he. I mean, as an expansion fucking team, you got the flower in your net. That's not bad. 
And yeah, but, you gotta like that. But and, but and Picard's he wasn't not a bad backup. He wasn't that good last year, though. No, he like his, and, then, his, and then the backup is Pickard. And correct me if I'm wrong, but Pickard was the backup of the worst team we've seen in the NHL in the last like 15 years last year. And I like Pickard. But. Yeah, that, it's very true. But there's that. That room's toxic. I think a lot of those guys can actually go and be successful other places. That team has to fucking just blow up. They're they're a fucking shit show, dude. Have you seen those pictures of Duchesne from Media yeah, Day? It's oh, disappointing. it makes me fucking like so sad for the guy. Just, I just, just like, yeah, I don't I don't even like looking at him, and listening to him. That little like fifteen second clip where he. Because I've now been in the locker room and talked to players. Like if somebody did that, it would be so awkward. Yeah. Fuck yeah, it would man. Like, uh, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, he, I'm just here for the team, but we're not here to fucking talk about the sad avalanche. I already got that shit out of the way. Good. Good. Um, so Derek's got me super stoked for the fucking team, uh, and Las Vegas' Twitter is fucking great. They are just <laughs> throwing fucking blows left and right, man. Not giving zero fucks. I, it, that's a way to come into it. Don't be timid. Yeah, they are. Uh, he's he's something. Dan Dan Maraza runs it and. He's uh, it's funny because because Dan's an interesting character. Dan Dan's the kind of guy that like you'll go up to and you'll say you can name anything. You'll be like, all right, who won the 1984 Norris Trophy? And he does the thing that like people who have these photographic memories do, where they like their eyes like stare up into <laughs> the sky for a second, and then he'll name the person, and you're like, God damn it, how do you do that? And then he does other stuff, and I'm like, all right, he clearly has no life. But <laughs> to be fair, he's running a bang-up Twitter account, and he's, he's – he's, uh, I've actually seen his list of burns that he's going to – that he's got planned on, like, all the different teams in case they ever come at him, and it, it's uh, it's pretty funny. It's not, it's not going to stop. The only thing I will say is he, he he's dug himself c- kind of this hole – where he's he's taken down so many different teams already and they're all waiting for it to get back at him. Like he does have to realize that he does run the Twitter account for a team that's probably the worst in the NHL. Right. And they're right. probably going to get burnt like a lot on yeah. the ice. So I have a feeling he's gonna get some uh some flack for some teams coming forward. But he he'll be fine. He, I, he's he's awesome. I guess it's a good time to do it now before the you know, before the beatings start happening. Yeah, he's done a good job of that. But even even the Kings game, they play a, it's a rookie game against the Kings. They lose six two, and like, well, you kind of got to shut up now. But that's not in Dan's nature. So so that that war happened, which was hilarious. Is is Colesor on, on Vegas? Colesor? Yeah, dude. The, yeah, where are you from? Why do you know who Keegan Colesor is? I'm from Ohio, man. He uh, was a Blue Jackets prospect. Oh, okay. So I, I I watched him at the uh, Memorial Cup, you know, when he was playing with Seattle, and I was really excited about seeing him come up, man. And uh, well, he he threw him down the other night, didn't he? Yeah, he's a he's a real genuine badass. I I, I very much enjoy him, and he's a, a very nice guy, which is seems to be always the case for the guys that uh, like to beat people up on the ice. He didn't do so well in that first fight. He kind of got the hey, his ass kicked by whoever <laughs> that dude was from the Kings. But no, he's he's been really good, like. He was at development camp, and he probably shouldn't have been there because he's a little too old for development camp. But he was really looking good in development camp, and now here in training camp, when they're actually letting him hit, he's really starting to stand out. I, I love his game, man. He'll be on the roster, but he's. It wouldn't shock me if he plays a couple games here and there. Like I think he'll go to Chicago in the AHL, but I think by by the time the season's out, I will, wouldn't surprise me if Kolesar gets twenty games. That was my next question. He'll probably be in Chicago, um, but like I mean, some of these guys are going to get you know bumps and not play a game here or two, you know, or you get sick. So it, I, I'm excited to see him get in and break some uh, NHL minutes. There's just something about him. He's fun to watch. He's fun. He's a fun guy. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting to see him play a little bit more at the NHL level. I don't know that he's quite skilled enough yet, like for right. the speed of the game. But he's uh, he's got that mean streak to him, and you, yes. you really can see it. And, and he can shoot. I mean, he, he's he's got really good hands in and around the goal. But kind of when he gets up into space, it, it it breaks down a little bit on him from time to time. So. I, 
long term, is he going to be like a huge piece of the Golden Knights? I doubt it. He might be a third line type, fourth line type guy, but he's going to be fun to watch. Fuck Fans yeah. are going to like him. I would love. I mean, put him on the fourth line. I'm a fan. I fucking I'm into that, dude. That, that, I think yeah, that not, was the I'm big, not a big fourth line guy. I, I always, I always, pretty much every time I watch hockey, I always get frustrated when the fourth line out there because you're like, all these guys are out there to do is not lose the game and hit people. Yeah, that's like, awesome. That's not hockey. Like, <laughs> I love give, it. Give dude. Me good players. Come on. I, I love it. Uh, it's. Uh, th- I think that was the biggest difference from the expansion roster to this. The the roster they're running with now. It seemed like the dudes from the expansion. It, it was a little bit of a tougher team, really, with uh, dudes like Mathot and there and Thorburn. But uh, they even said Definitely. when that was happening that a lot of these guys are going to get dealt. You know, for draft picks for the future of this team. Yeah. They picked way too many defensemen, and they're still in a spot where they have way too many defensemen. And yeah. it's kind of like this running joke in in, in and around uh, the media here where we, there's 11 guys on NHL contracts right now that are on one-way NHL contracts. So, like, you have to make a move here. And, and people still go back and they're like, you only got a second-round pick for Mark Mathot. How, you only got a second-round pick for Trevor Van Reems. Like, the guys, relax. Like, <laughs> It's a bunch of second round picks. They're going to be fine. You know, even more guys have to move. So it's, uh, it'll be interesting to see what winds up happening with, with all the defensemen. Cause quite frankly, there's too many. And every single one I ask, they're like, yeah, we're well aware that there's too many. Like we have to play well in this camp. So it, it, it'll be, it's going to be weird watching those preseason games. Cause if you can bet on them, take the unders because the defensive guys are trying and the the uh, forwards are not. <laughs> uh, when I look at uh, you know the line combinations, their third line really has uh, potential to do some damage with Lindbergh and Carlson and uh, Hulo on there. I think all three of those guys can really fucking play, and if they have any kind of chemistry, I would expect a lot of. I mean, as far as this team's going to go, a lot of production out of that line um, specifically. It's kind of your boom or bust there. Like, yeah, uh, they got they got to figure out who's going to play wing and who's going to play center because there's quite frankly there's too many centers. Uh, so they got to figure that part out first. Hall has been Hall has been really good. Like that guy could always score when he was in Minnesota. So he he I like him a lot. I think he's going to be one of kind of the standout guys. But then again, it, as guys get better, like I don't think you're going to see a lot of a line getting better on the golden Knights. I think you're going to see individuals get better and things are going to shift around yeah. because they're not necessarily looking to create great lines for a playoff series. They're looking to find guys that mesh and then find other pieces that can fit together. And the way you do that is give them all minutes with each other and figure it out. And then ultimately lose enough games so that Rasmus Dahlin is, is, is a golden Knight next year as well. <laughs> but that's, that's on, that's way on the horizon. But the, the fact is you, you, you can peg a line now, but down the road, I would guarantee you it's going to be completely different. Like it would not shock me if Paula plays first line minutes with Shipashoff from time to time. It wouldn't shock me if Eakin winds up as a second line center. If hell, it wouldn't shock me if if one of the defensemen winds up playing wing on the fourth line. Like I think they're going to try some shit and and see what do we have here, what can we do here, and also how can we make everyone else think our players are better than they actually are. Right, right. Because like, if you go through the roster, there is a massive number of guys who are on expiring contracts, specifically defensively, that if you can show... So let's say like a Jason Garrison, who hopefully he doesn't get traded because I fucking love the guy. He's the coolest. But... He's a guy who's got a four and a half million dollar contract or so. He's 32 years old. He's been to playoff series. He's been very good enough to earn that contract. Expiring contract comes off the books next year. He should have value to a team if he's playing first and second line minutes for the Golden Knights. So you, you, they're going to force some of those things to say, hey, you're playing on the first line for the next six games so that we can ship your ass out to Minnesota so we can get a second-round pick back or a first-round pick back. Right, right. Yeah, it's going to be – I mean, but that makes this team even more – you're going to see some crazy shit. 
you know, it's going to be great. Yeah, and, and, I mean, it's it's going to be awesome. By the way, the Golden Knights, as I'm looking, already have the Columbus second round pick for 2019. So we got to work on getting your uh, your first rounder for next year, and maybe uh, maybe a 2020 third. Dude, I'll trade you right now. First round pick for William Carlson back. I miss that guy. I, I loved no, him. <laughs> so I'll, I'll make that deal. I'll make that deal right now. And I like William Carlson. He he's a hell of a lot bigger than I thought when I first saw him. I'm. I was like, I thought he was just a normal size guy. He's a big dude. Is he? He lo- see, he looks small to me, but I mean, I haven't seen him up close either. Yeah, he's he's one of the thicker guys. Than, and and again, like yeah, like I was saying, he seems. I maybe that's just because I think because we're American, we just assume that all Swedish guys are like Eric Carlson. <laughs> so like, I think we we do we tend to do that. But uh, yeah, he's a big dude. Like he he's he's way bigger than Lindbergh. Really. Which you, yeah, and as far as like the size, I think their numbers are relatively similar, but he's way thicker or at least more built than Lindbergh. He's got them fucking beefy thighs, dude, them skater thighs. That's right. That's he's got wide, he's got really wide shoulders. Oh, which yeah. Is, now that I said that out loud, it's super creepy and like I, I think I might, I, I'm wearing a wedding ring. I might have to take it off or something. <laughs> I, I, I took mine off a while ago when we started. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, I knew we were going to get creepy when it got to Carlson. So I was like, man, I don't know. <laughs> oh, he's, he's the hair too. My goodness. That, that hair. Uh, and I'm, I'm worried about, cause him and, uh, Wenberg were like butt buddies on the blue jackets. So I, I hope one can, you know, man up and play without him or like, you know, maybe just put a picture of Carlson in his locker and, Pretend that he's there. That's interesting. Maybe we <laughs> should send each other pictures of the other one and bring them to the respective guy. Let's do it. Be like, hey. Like, <laughs> I think that's a great idea. Like, we'll bring a stick with, with <laughs> Wenberg's face on it, and then you have a stick with Carlson's face on it, and then we'll FaceTime yes. each other. Yes. I like this idea. This I is really perfect. Like this this is fucking perfect. I like this idea a lot. <laughs> Who do you think is going to score the most goals on your team, bud? I'm going to go with Riley Smith. Whoa. And, uh, and I know that uh, that's kind of a shot in the dark that a lot of people aren't really thinking. That's a uh, fucking gambling, I man. Think, yeah, I think James Neal is the one that makes the most sense, but I don't think he's on the team long enough to score enough goals. Plus, Interesting. Do you now, think he's going to get dealt? I do think he's going to get dealt, and I also don't think he's going to play until at least November. So I think it's going to be a while till you see him, and then when you see him, they're going to force him the puck. They're going to force him to score a bunch of goals, and they're going to trade him by February. Is he out and there I, right now? Yeah, his hand is still broken from uh, Western Conference Finals. Okay. Uh, they said two, three, or four weeks, and, I, and I'm like, uh, hey, McPhee, uh, two weeks is still in training camp. Four is missing the whole first month of the season. Like. Uh, <laughs> What, what, are we, what, what, what are we talking uh, here? <laughs> and yeah, he, he doesn't he doesn't like me that much, but that's okay. <laughs> Good. But no, that back to Riley Smith. Uh, the, the other options, like if you really run through it, like Vadim Shipashov doesn't shoot. Like I love Shipashov. I think he's going to be awesome. I think he's probably going to be the best player on the team. And when you step back and you're like, okay, who who is has the most value? Who's the most skilled player? I love It'll everything about down. Vadim except I cannot say his last name, man. Ship. A shoff. Ship a shoff. Or just go with what we call him, and that's Shippy. Shippy. That's it. I can do that all day. Yeah, we, we always call him Shippy. So I think he's the most skilled player, but again, he doesn't shoot. Like he, he we won't do it. And it's and that's a good thing. Like normally you're like, ah, that's terrible. That I hate that. You, you, no, that's a good thing. You he's think, so good at passing. It's insane. You think Gallant's into that, or you think Gallant's gonna you know push him in the uh, direction of maybe firing some more biscuits here and there? I don't think Gallant can speak to Shipashov, so I don't think it matters what Gallant does. <laughs> so the, the next best option is Marsha Show yeah. because he scored most, and yes. I think that was a bit of a flash in the pan. I like him. I think he's going to be good here, but I think that playing on a line he played on is a little bit different than yeah. playing on the line he's going to play on here, and he's going to play some much more – much tougher minutes. He's going to play against a lot better uh, opposition. That's, I think that it's going to be tough. For that's him. what's so going to make I, or I like break him. Stick. If he, if he can handle these top line or top two line minutes with uh, you know top guys staring him down, um, right. it, it depends on how he handles that. But uh, like you said, if you look down it, he would be you know first, second, or third. Where you're going to go? Oh, that guy's going to get the goals. 
Yeah, I mean, you, you look at last year. I think I, I want to say Huberto went down, and he played on the line with. Was it? I know Yager was on the line. I want to say Trocheck was the other one on the line. I'm looking it up. I think that sounds about right. What? Yager, Trocheck, and Marshall. Yeah. I think that might, or maybe it was, maybe it was Barkov. I don't know. Either way, he's playing on a line with much better players than he's going to be playing on here. Yeah. So I don't know how he's he's going to transition to kind of being the guy on the ice that you're focused on. Especially and by the way, especially if you know Shippy's not shooting. This. Right. Well, I don't think he's going to play with Shippashov. I, I I have a feeling they're going to go with Perron. Uh, and probably Smith with Shipashov. So okay. that's again, whoever's playing with Shipashov, those wingers are going to have the most points and the most goals because he's so like it is ridiculous the way this guy sauce passes the puck. It's insane. Like you don't it it feels like the puck is hovering. It doesn't move at all. It's nuts. Huh. Well, like, be- I swear to you, he can sauce pass a puck. Onto a soda can and and land it there. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, and I think uh, you know Perron's interesting too. I I think he can put up. I think he can put up big numbers. I mean, he has the potential to be a, a what? I mean, do well and then get traded himself. Yeah, I feel bad for him because like he's he and Riley Smith or not Riley Smith. He and Colin Miller are the two that like. When I've talked to him, I get this feel that's like, God damn it, I wish I wasn't here. <laughs> you know, so and, and I think Perron's fully aware. Like there's an article that was written in French, so I only got to read it through Bing Translate. But basically what was being said was he's pissy about getting traded over and over and over again. Like he's been on like seven teams in the last four years. It's insane. Yeah, that's fucking cool, And then he dude. comes here. Yeah, you're going to Vegas, bud. <laughs> Guess where you're going, bud? Like, yeah. even if he's great, they're probably not going to re-sign him. Yeah, I wouldn't see it happening that way. I wouldn't see and that. His, his English is is uh, he doesn't he's not a guy that likes to speak English. So like he can and he will and he does, but he doesn't prefer to speak English, which I think that will kind of get in the way a little bit. So I I just. Again, like I said, I feel bad for him because he, he seems like a good guy. He's I, I don't know. I was watching him today, and I don't really know how to describe this other than saying he doesn't. He makes it look so easy that like, but then again, nothing happens when he has the puck. Yeah, I don't really know. Does that make sense? Like, he gets the puck. He doesn't look like he's trying to do anything. But then nothing actually happens. So I'm afraid that that's what's going to happen when he gets out there. Yeah, and if he doesn't want to be there, I mean, that, that shit might show more and more and more as well. So, yeah, and then that's, that's one we're going to have to keep up on. But, I mean, the problem is you never get these guys to say it. Like That's a fucking that, – that's what pisses me off the most about today's hockey player is you can't, won't talk. You can't get a fucking dude to talk uh, about anything. Uh, they're super annoying. It, there's and I don't I don't get it. Why? I mean, that's what. Uh, not that the the sport is held back, but that's that's what's going to get dudes. I mean, watch Conor McGregor spout off at the mouth, or yeah. you know, Odell yeah. Beckham Jr. That's what gets and people then, interested. You got to piss some people off sometimes. Yeah, it's funny you say that because like I for the last two or three years or so, I've been covering the UFC. And it's so backwards. But what's weird is UFC guys are like the nicest athletes ever. Yeah. Like I would make the argument UFC athletes are nicer than hockey players, which is like absurd. But I, I've gone up to guys and I'm like, hey, how you doing? And they're like, fuck John Jones. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's fantastic. And like here, you know, they, uh, I, I think literally. I think the UFC dudes understand that they're selling something too. Right. I think they that there's a little bit of uh, – and I don't want to c- compare it because it's not comparable, but the little bit of WE to it. There, you you got to sell yeah, – you, you got to sell what's going on. It's you and another guy in an octagon. Um, so I think, maybe, I think maybe if a, a dude came out you know, and said – like if England came in and was like, you know what? 
Fuck Getzlav, dude. He's a punk. You, were, you know, and maybe start some shit. And you, you don't even have to really mean it. Who, who was uh, who was it in in the? Uh, is somebody in Nashville? Was it Ryan Johansson? Yeah, dude. Who said something like he's like I don't know how his family and friends watch him play hockey. Yeah, like, it, it was, was about, like what wasn't it? Was it, it was about uh, he hit him in the dick. Getzloff. Who was it about? It was Kessler. It was Kessler. It yes, was, Kessler. It, Kessler hit him in the fucking dick, and yes. jo- Johansson got super butt hurt about and, it. And that's awesome. And that's how you create rivalries. That's how you create that stuff. Like, and look, I, I mean, look uh, at it. We're talking about it now, and that was one of my favorite moments of this playoffs. Was him fucking? It was, awesome. it was yeah. great. And he got hurt and missed the whole Stanley Cup Finals. Yeah, yeah. They might have won. Yeah, that, I think they would have done better for sure. He's uh, they were right in. That. God, I wish they won that. And there's something Fucking about right. Ryan too. Is he gets under and people refuse to believe me, but uh, Johansson and Dubinsky get under Sidney Crosby's skin. I've seen it. Oh, hap- yeah. I've seen it happen. He. They'll play shitty with him and uh, get him fucking starting to to not do Sydney shit. Uh, I I think that really hurt Nashville when it came down to it. Completely agree. I, I think that uh, getting under Sidney Crosby's skin is actually easier than it should be. Oh, uh, for sure. And I, I what I'm bummed out about this year is I think they got under his skin the wrong way by sucking uh, McDavid's dick so much that I think that Sidney's going to go serial killer on the league this year. I think he's going to just fucking – just to be go, fair, I, he, he's going to get a shit ton of points. I have a feeling, and then if there's, it, if there's it, any dick to be sucked, it would be Connor. <laughs> yeah, for would. sure, I mean, for sure, dude. He's uh, he's, he's good. He's still sinking into my brain. Like I still, I all right. I'm still not like sure how he's how he's that good. Like my my brain's like uh, wa- I'm, watching so him, I'm watching him. I'm watching him. I'm like, good. oh my god, dude, this guy's fucking unreal. Is this real? He's too fast. It's unfair. He's too fast. Like they got a, you know, they have like restrictor plate racing in, in NASCAR. Yeah. He they get, he get gets, for him. He gets like, no blades. Sir, sir, you're going too fast. Please yep. slow down. He gets no blades. He plays without blades and that's. It's just not fair. He's just too fast. Like, I, too, I don't know. It's, too controlled. You're too fast. Yeah. Too, like he can stop whenever he wants going full, full bore. You're just like, oh dude, fuck you. It's not fair. Farkov and Yager is who who Marcel Show played with last year. Yes, yes, that's a line. I mean, that's a hell of a line. And and nobody nobody defensively is like shit. Where's Marcel Show? <laughs> right, you know. Right. By the way, he's like he's like four foot two. I was going to say he's like a third grader. Yeah, but he's awesome. Super good player. Ridiculous hands as well. Uh, yeah, like uh, like I said, it's going to be up to him um, how he handles that and. Uh, if he steps up to the bar and says, fuck it, I'm just going to, you know, and do it, and it works. I, I mean, I, I wish him the best. I do like watching him, and I, he is a great talent and has the potential to, you know, do 30, 40 points. You know what I mean? Yep. I, I think I think he's going to be good, but I don't think he's going to have quite the numbers that he had. So right. So people are going to be like, oh, it's a down year for Marcia Show. It's like, no, this is kind of what he should be. Like, I think he should be a 20-goal guy. 15, 20 assists, 40 points, some are there. Yeah, I agree. I agree full-heartedly, man. This this Vegas team is going to be one of the worst teams in the league. That's, Correct. That's just going to happen. I don't think it's uh, – that's what happens. I mean, you're not, you're not going to the playoffs. It's – but I still think they're fucking exciting as hell. What do you predict and what do you expect out of – Las Vegas Golden Knights this upcoming season? Well, first of all, I think it's awfully difficult to win consistently when the best skater on the ice will always be on the other team. <laughs> the second best skater on the ice will pretty much always be on the other team. And in many cases, the third best skater on the ice will be on the <laughs> other team as Christ. well. <laughs> so, like, I mean, even you look at, like, take a bad team. So, like, take... Colorado, they easily have three players better than Shipashov. Yeah. I mean, there's no doubt. Arizona, okay, maybe only one. Like well, Ekman Larson's probably better than everybody else, but that's probably the only one. They, I think Arizona's got a couple dudes now that, with their offseason moves. Um, but like you said, I mean, no more than three, but still that's three skaters better than anybody on I mean, the- So, So, like, 
you can't win consistently doing that. Like, this isn't fucking miracle every single game. Like, yeah, we'll have our miracle moments from time to time. Like, they'll beat somebody at some point. You'll be like, holy shit. Like, did that just happen? Like, it wouldn't shock me. It would not shock me in the least if they go into Pittsburgh and win. Yeah. Just because Flurry will play out of his mind, and right. the guys will all be pumped up to play for Flurry, and and they'll win that game. And those are going to be the bad, but those are going to be the little battles that I think will be good for them. You know, to to win those, maybe focus on something like that, and maybe set smaller goals towards something like that. Like, oh, let's go in and fuck Pittsburgh up tonight. Let's, let's right. That'd be great. You I, know, I'm hoping you mess up Chicago. I can't stand Chicago, but I came from Chicago. I can't stand the Blackhawks, but, but the, the number here in Vegas is 69 on points. So that's way too high. 69. Like you got to, got to, got to go under, right? Like, I don't think they're going to pass 60. I, now you say it, man, I'd be surprised if they did. Because, like, you can look at, I mean, you look at how many teams they're remote, remotely close to. It's, like, four. Arizona, Vancouver, New Jersey, <laughs> Colorado, I maybe, maybe Winnipeg. Yeah, maybe. Just because goalie's not good yes. there. Like, Steve fucking Mason, god damn it, dude. What I mean, so, yeah, so you're looking at maybe five teams they're, like, on par with. And so that's... Let's say they win all of those games. That's like 11 wins. Oh, and then then they have to play in the Pacific. That's Yeah, so they're playing in the Pacific. <laughs> yeah. and they just get murdered by the Ducks, the, the Kings, the Sharks. Edmonton's going to smoke them every single time because nobody's going to stop McDavid. Ed- Calgary's going to beat them up from time to time. Yeah. I think Ed- Ed- like, Ed- you got Edmonton winning the Pacific, yeah? Yeah, I got them to win the Cup. Do you? I have him going to the Cup final. I have him. I have uh, him making his way there. You know, last year made it to the conference, almost the conference final. This year, conference final. Next year, uh, Stanley Cup, and then in three years, he'll be a Stanley Cup champion for sure. I think they're going to win like four of the next six. <laughs> He's that good, like dude. He shit. is that good. He is that like, good. They, honestly, the the biggest hurdle I think for Vegas ever being legitimately good is Connor McDavid's existence. <laughs> And, uh, and my my co-host uh, who isn't with me today, but uh, he is under the impression that as soon as the Raiders get out there, the, the Golden Knights are fucked. Do you think there's any truth in that? Uh, there's certainly some truth. I don't. I don't think that it's as dire as as some people like to make it. But let's put it this way: there's more watch parties for the Raiders game tomorrow than there are the Golden Knights preseason game. Yeah. <laughs> one of the teams is named Vegas. One of them is still Oakland, and is going to be Oakland until 2020. Right? Uh, yeah, that's... You know, the front page of every sports page tomorrow will have Derek Carr's face, not Vadim Shipashov's face. <laughs> so, like the media coverage wise, it's 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 really a shame because the, the the Raiders just completely like bent the city of Las Vegas over a chair and rammed it up their ass like a hundred fucking times. Meanwhile, you have the Golden Knights who did everything like by the book the For best sure. way you could they possibly sure do it. And, and then and then the city, you know, turns around and hands them the biggest competition in the world. Like it's really a shame. It, yeah, it kind of fucking sucks. I was Yeah, I mean, but long term, they'll be fine. Like when a team's good, the cities get around good teams. Like like look at look at Washington. Like that's not a traditional hockey city, but when they're good and the Redskins blow of course you're going to go watch hockey. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for and I sure, think man. that'll be the same case. Like, when they're good, they'll be good. So it's going to put a little bit more pressure, I think, on the front office. And I think it's going to put a little bit of pressure kind of on the fan base to keep the building actually gold rather than whatever team's coming in. But, yeah. again, it, does it really matter? Like, as long as there's people in the stadium, like, this is going to be a bit embarrassing when every game's an away game. But... If once your team's good, like Dude, if Rasmus Stalin winds up on this team, and I know I keep I keep blowing Rasmus Stalin, fucking seventeen year old, he's like half my <laughs> age, but still, you know, if they wind up getting that guy and he is what they say he is, which is like better than Eric Carlson, Ooh. they're going to be good for a while, for sure. And so it, it works in Florida. You ever watch a fucking game in Florida? There's 
all the other color. Of the, yeah, you know. and, but, but like, they, and they've had good seasons. Tampa's a, Tampa's a really good example. Exactly. Tampa went for the cup a few years back, and like that place was lit. But then when they're not good, like it's awful to be yeah. there. So I think if you're going to be kind of in that ballpark, but I trust the front office here. I trust the good. I'm I'm living and dying with cup and cars playoffs in three cup and six. That's the owner's mantra. He like <laughs> says that every you're like hello Bill cup and three or the cup playoff in three cup and six. You're like Jesus Christ, calm down, man. Yeah, then maybe uh, not drink some coffee that day or some shit. That's yeah, he, he needs to calm down. But I, but I'm in. I'm in. I'm buying. Fuck yeah, in why, not? why not? Why not? To cover the team, I'm buying in playoffs in three cup and six. And then I'm going to kiss Bill Foley on the face. Fucking A, man. Uh, the, uh, I need you to do me a favor. And next time you talk to Derek England, I have a bet with a guy here. Um, we do a hashtag bet, Steve Tacular. And I said the first Las Vegas home game, there will be a fight. And I said it was going to be Thorburn, but this was right after the expansion draft. So I need Derek England to fight somebody the, for the home opener um, so I can win some money. All right, I'll ask him. I'll just tell him. I'll ask him, what are the chances you get in a fight in, at Dallas? Thank you. And we'll see what he says. Who are your three but stars? I'm if we ask him, yeah. Are, if, if we ask him, are we then planting a seed of doubt that we're waiting for it? Like, I, I think maybe asking him might make it worse for you. Yeah, dude, that's a good fucking point. Don't ask him. Don't just be like, dude, you're how fucking. Do we, how do we, like, how do we put it something in his head that's like, makes him want to hate somebody like can can we can you write a fake article that says like i don't know tyler sagan you know hit on his wife or yes something. this Shit. is that's the right and direction i'll print it and show it to him and be like look man look at this, this sagan, you think you gotta be shit out of him yeah <laughs> have him fucking how fight we, tyler sagan too that would be fucking crazy yeah like how do we how do we do that yeah, or maybe just keep playing and like, dude, how, how's your hands feeling, champ? How's your hands feeling, dude? You know? Get <laughs> yeah, I'll bring up a belt one of these days. And like, I'll, I'll, I'll bring up a robe to wear out. To, you yes. know, all, yeah, exactly. The, the just, bis- just basically call him Muhammad the yeah. rest of the time. The biscuit belt, dude. That's what he needs. Ooh, I, we should make me make a biscuit belt. That's what if that's what has to happen. Be like, dude. Currently, we wouldn't own the biscuit belt because the one fight that the team has been in, uh, Colazar got murked. So fuck. So we got to get it back from LA. Yeah, we, no, dude, we're we'll fucking to get that, we can get that. it from those pansies, dude. Easy. I think they should be able to take it. I'm expecting a fight tomorrow. Good. We're playing Vancouver tomorrow, and and I'm, I'm expecting somebody's got to somebody's got to beat the shit out of somebody. Maybe Stoner. Yeah, I can see Stoner doing it. Maybe, yeah, he's, maybe he's been. He's maybe been Keegan gets a little pepper under him. Get, <laughs> Ken, who are your three stars for the Las Vegas fucking Golden Knights, dude? Ooh, be careful! Don't call them the Las Vegas Golden Knights. They're not the Las Vegas Golden Knights. It's Vegas, Vegas Golden Vegas Knights. Golden Jesus, Christ. yeah, be careful. That's a that's a hot button issue here in Vegas. Oh, I'm, there's no. It. I'm going to get that wrong so many times. Yeah, people hate it because, like, everybody's all pissy. Like, we get our first team and you name them after a nickname. And, you know, I, I literally had more than one person come up to me on the day they named the team and tell me they're canceling the season tickets because they didn't name them Las Vegas. Whoa. Yeah, I also told them that you guys would have canceled season tickets when they lost the first game, six to one, <laughs> two. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, bye. So <laughs> three stars. Um Let's start with Shipashov, mainly because he's awesome and Russian and he doesn't speak any English, which yes. is hilarious. And, and he laughs the entire time he's on the ice. <laughs> and his saucer passes are just insane. Seriously, watch the preseason game tomorrow. Like, I don't, I don't know if it's on center ice or whatever. I don't know how you get it in Columbus, but. Center ice. Watch, I'm not sure it's on there. You got to watch it. He's going to. Well, no, shit. He's not going tomorrow. That's right. I don't know. Whenever he gets to play, you're going to see a sauce pass and you're going to be like, holy shit, Ken was right. So that's number one. Two, let's go. What, wait, well, how, how, what, what, are, what are we rating this? Because Shippershoff just deserves number one no matter how you're rating it. What are, what are you asking me for here? Your three MVPs from one to three. Like on the season? Yeah. Like, how, like most goals and whatnot? Who do you think is going to be the most three vital players to this team this okay. season? All right, so one to Shippershoff, two, 
Uh, let's go with let's go with Riley Smith because I gave you his name earlier as most goals. Yes, so we got to be we got to stick along that one. And three, hmm, I'm gonna say, can I? Let me give you two because it's not fair to say Jason Garrison because I think he's gonna be the standout on the defense, but then they're gonna trade him. So when the season's over and I say, well, it was Jason Garrison, you'll be like, yeah, but he's not on your team anymore. (laughs) It's well semantics. So half Jason Garrison, the other one. All right. So I'll give you I'll give you a full half. Half Garrison, half Shea Theodore. So I think Garrison will be good in the first half and Theodore will be amazing in the second half. That works perfectly, man. That works absolutely perfectly. Ken, I cannot thank you enough, man. Uh, You got me even more excited for the Vegas Golden Knights season. Tell the Biscuit Babies where they can find you, my man. Viva VGK, as we say. <laughs> well, the website is sinbin.vegas. Don't do .com because .com is overrated. And, and, and uh, .vegas was more expensive, and we like to show our muscles. So I like sinbin. it. Sinbin.vegas. Uh, at sinbinvegas on uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that good shit. And then, uh, yeah, we have a podcast that's on uh, iTunes and Podbean or whatever the shitty – why do people have Android phones? I don't understand that. I, I don't know, but I hate them. every single one of them though. Yeah, we're on that too. So listen to the podcast. It's a lot more of me rambling about how much I, I uh, want to suck Connor McDavid's dick. <laughs> and go rate and review them, guys. Don't be fucking idiots. It's good shit. Yeah, do and, that. We, and, like the, we like when the, the, the most stars – and definitely, definitely follow their Twitter. Uh, very active and very fun and uh, good shit on there, man. I, uh, I appreciate what you do, and I really appreciate you coming on, man. You got it. Don't, don't forget, you got to watch Nate Schmidt on the white gloves. He's hilarious. I'm doing it as soon as I get off here. Giddy up. Don't think that I won't. Uh, I'm, I think you will. Hey, enjoy the fights tonight, bud. Go Triple G. Go Triple G for sure. Oh, Rockhold? Against against Branch? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> I think it's a, it's, it's like kind of a gimme, right? Thousand or something? It's kind of a gimme. It's got to be. But he needs I'm one. Looking it up. He needs one. Well, yeah. He's been terrible. It's – there. something weird's happening in the UFC, and it's got to get back on track here soon. He's minus 500. I may actually take that. He's minus five. Yeah, you got to lay five hundred to win a hundred. I, I may, I may put fifty bucks on that. That might be worth a free ten dollars. There's no fucking way he loses to David Branch. Th- there's not a chance. I don't think David Branch has he even won. I, not that I care about. If he has, Branch, god damn it, <laughs> getting off onto UFC. How does how does he even get that fight? Like, I, I like I said, dude. I don't John know. Who, Poe, I, I don't know who's Luis booking these Taylor. fucking fights. Vinny Malgate. I've never heard of these guys. Is Mike Perry He's fighting tonight? Fight in the UFC. Is Mike Perry fighting Ooh. tonight? Didn't he get pulled? Oh Jesus oh, Christ! No, I'm thinking of Jesse Taylor. Uh, Mike Perry. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Platinum Perry, baby, from Flint, Michigan. I love him. I think he might be. I am not going to watch a second of that card. Is that bad? <laughs> I have it recorded. I don't know what I'm going to do. I literally am not going to watch I don't it. Know oh, yeah, it. Alex Reyes. No, he'll kill that guy too. Yeah, I hope he What's fucking knocks his, that one? knocks his fucking Ooh, face Tony off. Tony Martin's fighting today. Tony Martin's from where I grew up, Palos Park, Illinois. What Taylor get pulled for? Uh, he had some sort of uh, steroid uh, in his system, which is the most shocking thing you've ever heard that the guy who – took 97 years to get back to the UFC, can't stay around. Yeah, no shit, right? Hector Lombard is plus 135. Who's he fighting? Wow. Anthony Smith? I don't even know who that I is. I have no idea who Anthony Smith is. I don't either. Mike Perry's minus 500. Who is Anthony Smith? It's a gigantic white dude, it seems like. Yeah, fuck him. He's done. I've never heard of him. I'm in. Oh, I'm totally in for that one. All right, now I gotta watch. Now I gotta watch the fights because I'm taking uh, Hector Lumbar. <laughs> you hey, just for, the dude. Do what I'm doing. I'm fucking buy getting the boxing fights and then recording in the UFC. I'm gonna stay off the shit and I'll watch it later. I might, I might have to do the exact same thing. Or I'll fucking fire thing. up the laptop and watch one and watch the TV and just go super nerd and watch dudes get punched in the face all night long. Dude, this Anthony Smith is a goofy-looking gentleman. 
I hope he doesn't listen to this because like he'll. Hey, I'm sorry, are you the Sinbin guy? And punch <laughs> I'm gonna me in the fuck face. you. I'm gonna fuck you, <laughs> Anthony Lionheart Smith. Oh, oh my god, god, that's rough, dude. dude. That's Plus fucking 125. rough. You need to fly to Vegas right now and put money on Lombard. <laughs> He beat Elvis Mutopsic and Andrew Sanchez. You're just making shit up now. No, this is legit. I was actually there. Now that I'm looking at it, I was there when he beat Elvis Mutopsic. I do not remember that. Performance of the night, and I was in the building, and I do not remember this. It got performance of the night? Yeah. He, two, his, two of his last three fights, I was there. And I don't know who this guy is. <laughs> That's not good, dude. I was literally there. <laughs> <laughs> that's so. That's not good, man. Was, how does a guy get performance in the, and I don't know who he is? That's that makes well, no makes zero I, sense. When was this fight? I was sitting. I was by the cage for this fight. You probably. How fucking, is this possible? You probably interviewed him, dude. No, preliminary. I definitely didn't for that one now that I'm looking at it. I remember Jamie Moyle. I remember Dong Young Kim. What the hell? Korean Zombie? Who? I don't know who this guy is. Yeah, Korean Zombie beat uh, Brendan O'Reilly that day. Dude, he's a bad man. I remember Demetri Johnson almost lost that fight that day to Tim Elliott. Oh, I dude, I remember the card you're talking about now. Yeah, Elvis Mutopsic was on that card against Anthony Smith. I watched that. I don't know who the yeah. fuck you're talking about. Yeah, I was there. I was next to the cage. If you watch it back, you'll see my face. And <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm i I'm sure if you watch it, there's a screenshot of me looking at El, Alec. What is his name? Anthony Smith. And <laughs> I still don't know who he is. <laughs> oh, fuck, dude. Ken, I love you, man. Thanks. This was a lot of fun. You got it. Anytime. Whenever, when, when do the Golden Knights uh, come and get their asses kicked to the Blue Jackets? Let's do it again. We will. Thanks a lot, buddy. You got it. Take it easy. Bye.